Eric, guys. Uh, you're watching Jaded and Elated TV, and I am here with Rod and Sean. It's Duo Tang. First off, did you realize that this was going to be the 20th anniversary of your debut record? I was just talking to my mom, and uh, it's like 20 years, and she's like, "So you were?" And she didn't even say the age. So <laughs> she's like, "20 years ago?" I was like, "Yeah, it's been 20 years." It, it kind of hit me when when we talked about it when I first got your emails, and is. Quite a while ago, but, but and we doesn't had, seem that long ago. No, we just had our 20th anniversary from starting as a band <clears throat> yeah. back in June at the Jazz Fest, I think it was. Yeah. Let's let's talk maybe a little bit about the record itself, Smash Ships, uh, turning 20, and let's let's go back. The can you get yourselves into that headspace of where you were when you were recording it and writing those songs, and oh, yeah. and well, then when it when it came out, maybe the initial reaction. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll start with the. I'll start with where we were when we were recording it, because we were in Vancouver. Um, we just signed with Mint, and we were just like a, a year old as a band. And we went out to Vancouver and recorded with uh, Daryl Newdorf. Yeah, uh, he's done like Nico Case, mm -hmm. and uh, he did some Sir McLaughlin stuff, and a yeah. whole bunch of stuff. He's, he's an awesome guy. And he had a studio, he lived in a studio, it was like an apartment slash studio. Right on, on Hastings. Yeah, East Hastings, like in the thick of. Cool. Um, so we, we actually lived with him for two weeks or so, and it was the, I think one of the best times ever. At oh, that, yeah. Remember some of the shows we got to see at that time? Oh, it was, the, it was the, no, it was the best weekend. One of the best weekends of my life. Like, we, we, we were still writing on the way, because I remember King of Beliefs <laughs> happened. Like, that's how, honestly, quickly it happened. We, yeah, we have 12 songs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. We're listening to The Cure on the way. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. But, and then we got into Vancouver played our first show in Vancouver on the way we played one show in Calgary and we were like the headlining band and it was with Smoother and the New Grand oh, wow. it was like that's how be and because and I remember this too driving into Calgary hearing our song on the radio and we found the number for CKU to, or what CJS whatever the CSR. yes yeah and finding and this isn't when you had cell phones or anything so like looking up the number go we're in the band that you just played we're called duo day a little car with a trailer yeah 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 they were like why don't you come on down to the station we did we met those folks and played this awesome show which was like crazy that anybody would play our because we had a we actually had a seven inch out before that right. from mark kubis and sean mayberry yeah. slow down they're, they're the ones that got the ball rolling for us and just after our three or four shows, like, do you guys want to put out a seven inch? So, and then we signed with Mint. Then we play the Mint showcase party, like bringing up Chris Murphy, Sloan, who we love, they were there. We got interviewed <coughs> by Much Music, like the show was awesome. They bought us tickets to go see Stereo Lab and got it by Voices. Oh, wow. And My then, we, yeah, yeah. And then we start playing or start recording the first day and get a phone call. I don't even remember how it happened, but do you guys want to open up for the Flaming Lips? <laughs> we were like... <laughs> that was in one week. Yeah, it was we're in one like week. Cloud nine. We're like, okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, it was the best week. And then we start to record our first record. Yeah. And that, that was like, we, he, you know, from Rod being in Novalero, mm -hmm. I never really, after Duotang stopped, I didn't, I was happy where I was, you know, like just DJing and not, you know, like I had done this. But he would tell me, you know, Sean, like, this stuff doesn't happen with, with other bands, like, a lot, you know? Like, we were we were pretty lucky. Like, we've always known we were pretty lucky at the start there, you know? Yeah. Like, to, yeah, yeah. I'm really thankful, too. Appreciate it. How, how long did it take to actually lay down the tracks? It was pretty quick. Daryl wanted to, to basically capture us pretty raw, like, yeah. warts and all sort of thing, which is the one thing, actually, I'm not crazy about when I listen back, because we were a new band. Like, we were still trying to figure out how to do everything in our sound and so um but it's, it's kind of neat because he just really recorded it as it was so the tracks were really quick um it, it was a pretty fast process for the most part yeah two weeks yeah it was, like for it was except for one night we had uh what was the guy who came in with the trumpet oh yeah or the sax or something it was, we had what was the name copyright no he you know the band copyright yeah they, i remember copyright. Yeah, yeah, they, were, they were they were slow and then they were copyright yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yes yeah. Ex exactly and they had a space down the hall so he would come down and tell stories about the music industry and terrify us <laughs> yeah. but that was kind of neat but that's the the longest it took for the tracks was that we brought someone in to play on ghosts and we never ended up using it no. that was the only we said we'll, we'll leave him alone for a couple hours and i remember looking at him and he had a <laughs> bottle beside him that was like this full and he had his trumpet and he was on a stool we came back three hours later. He was off the stool. The yeah. bottle was empty, and the producer was going like, 
it's not going to work. <laughs> How'd you get involved with Mint? I guess is a good question. Yeah, that was before Mint signed us at CMW um, in March of '96, and then we recorded in. Is it that quick? Was yeah. it March of '96, and we we're recording by yeah. April or May? Yeah, and yeah, then it came out when September. Yeah, <laughs> like, <Holy> no, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> like, and the thing is too, there we were taught. There was other labels that were interested. Like they didn't think we knew this, but I found out there were other labels that were interested, and we did a show in Toronto. Remember that when the Mafia showed up? Mm -hmm. um, no, yeah, you want to hear a story. <laughs> but they had told the other labels that we, we had already signed to them. Okay. And we hadn't, but we were happy. They did, like, I mean, we're happy with everything with Mint, but yeah, we found out that they had let everybody, because I guess the word, the, this is like, we went to CMW, and remember there was like a full page article on us. Yeah. yeah like, that's like, yeah, wow. that was written about the buzz band of the festival. Like, that's how small the community was then, right? Like, yeah. I mean, and how cool and how quick people picked up on things. Like, so we did, we did the show there. The mafia showed up. It was like, I remember being outside <laughs> and like three like sedans pull up. With, this, this is not exaggeration. This with with, with, with like 12 Joe Pesci's. Yeah. They get out. <laughs> the they pull the biker out. Beat the living shit out of him. Yeah, all you can see, you can see like it was solid, and then the window, and we saw the guy go down, and all the Joe Pesci's kicking. Yeah, and it was right out of a movie. And he didn't even make a move because he knew he screwed up in a mafia bar, right? Like he's like, I'm gonna take my beats by the, and then they drove off, and I'm standing there like shaking, yeah. and the bartender, here, honey, have a shot. Don't worry, you're okay. <laughs> and then we, it's okay. It's time for you guys to go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was our first show, and that's how we got signed to Mint. <laughs> Well, that's pretty rock and roll. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess my, my main question, this is the burning question that I've always had. How many bop ba -das are too many bop ba -das <laughs> in a song? You know how many? Because um, they, uh, they've now changed to banana nas. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to put as our logo in the past, more bop ba -bas than New Zealand. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, good question. That is actually just uh, lazy songwriting when you can't think of a lyric. Or you can't afford a horn part. Either way, it all, like it fleshes out the sound. I mean, yeah. it's especially on stage too. You guys going Baba does and then it really uh, kicks it in. So. That's funny you mentioned that though, because on Smash the Ships, that was like the height of Baba ba, -ba yeah. territory. <laughs> it's okay. We have been jaded and elated, and this has been Duo Tang, and I want to thank everyone for watching. <laughs>